Om Shanti. This is the Avyakt Murli of 3rd of October, 1975. And the title is, In order to serve in a broad and unlimited way, make your intellect broad and unlimited. Do all of you consider yourselves to be those who understand the method and the law given by the Father, who is the lawmaker? Those who know the method and the law are embodiments of success and have practical results of their every thought and every deed. Do you experience yourselves to be like this? To be an embodiment of success means to be an emperor of the land that is free from the sorrow. Before attaining the fortune of the kingdom of the future, you would be a carefree emperor at the present time. That is, there would be no trace of sorrow even in your thoughts. Because you have come away from the Iron Age and are at present in the Confluence Age. Do you consider yourselves to be the confluence-aged emperors of the land that is free from sorrow? To be an emperor of the land that is free from the sorrow means to be a master of all the treasures of happiness. The treasures of happiness are the birthright of Brahmins. It is because of this right that today the name and form of elevated souls are respected. Are you such a living form of emperors of the land free from sorrow that the sorrow of many soul is removed for a temporary period by their taking your time? That on seeing your images, people remember your divine activity and that souls who are experiencing sorrow begin to experience happiness. Do you know your treasures? While well, keeping all the treasures in your awareness, constantly remain cheerful. That is, constantly remain beyond the attraction of the elements and the five vices. Together with these treasures of happiness, do you experience your complete and perfect form of belonging to the one father and none other? You know how to keep the key to the treasures with yourself carefully, do you not? You don't lose the key, do you? Are you able to hear the subtle call of time and of all the souls according to the time? Or do you constantly remain busy with your own self? All your devotee souls of the previous kalpa are invoking you, their special deities. They are chanting, come, come, while enhancing their invocation with beautiful music, that is, while playing a lot of musical instruments, they call out very loudly. They adopt many different means to make all of you happy. While listening to them in the living form in an incognito way, do you not have mercy for them? Or are you still busy in having mercy for your own self? Only by stabilizing yourself in the form of a world benefactor, a great donor, and a bestower of blessings will you be able to feel mercy. You will only have mercy when you experience yourself to be the form of a world mother or world father. Then you would not be able to tolerate the sorrow or wandering of any soul. However, you remain stable in this form for a very short period. According to the time, the form of service has to be vast and unlimited. 
What is the unlimited form of service? Would you call what you are doing at present unlimited? That you had an unlimited mela. In comparison to the early days, you may call it unlimited, but what is the final unlimited form? According to the speed of time, in just the task of giving the message, to what percentage have you given the message? Are you able to see the 900,000 subjects of the beginning of the golden age in front of you? The subjects of the beginning would also have some specialties, would they not? Are souls with such specialties visible at all the centers, or are they still behind a veil? Are you able to see the rosary of 16,000? Have the teachers prepared the rosary of 16,000? What is the date for removing the veil? Of course, it has to happen according to the time. But do not become careless while thinking in this way. Now create unlimited plants. Unlimited plants means that whomever you serve, that soul should become instrumental to serve many others. Each soul should become an instrument to serve an unlimited number of souls. At present, each of you is giving time to another individually. Now, serve souls who themselves become instruments to serve many others. Let there be service through their name. Many souls on the basis of their relations, connections, and service are very well known. That is, others have an impression of their virtues and activities in advance. It is not just a question of someone being wealthy or just a question of position, but many ordinary souls on the basis of their virtues and their service are very well known in their own field. Whether they are politicians or religious leaders, they should be influential. You should select souls who would become instruments to serve others on your behalf. Such quality service now remains to be done. Souls become well known by their name in two ways. One is because of their having a position of importance. Secondly, they become well known because of their virtues and activities. Those whose names are glorified on the basis of their important position are only able to create an impression for a temporary period, whereas an impression created by souls who are well known because of their virtues and activities is for all time. Therefore, let such soul merge to become instruments for spiritual service. Then you will be able to do unlimited service in a short time. This is known as fast speed of service, so that many are able to be shot by just one arrow. When such souls come, many other souls automatically come. So now, let service take on such a form. Souls who become instruments for such service will not become regular godly students like you. Your relationships and contact with them would be close and loving. You have to have a broad and unlimited intellect. So according to their desires and while they consider to be a method for their attainment, make them instruments to serve many other through their own experience. In order to do this type of unlimited service, you need to have a discrimination power. Therefore, now have such a broad 
and unlimited intellect and let service take on an unlimited form. Now, we shall see which worthy children give the proof of doing such unlimited service. Those who become instruments to do such service claim a right to a royal status. From the results, we shall know which zone will claim number one. Acha, to such serviceable souls who have a broad and unlimited intellect, to those who serve many others, even through their thoughts, to such tireless servers, the same as the Father, to the worthy children who give the proof, Bab Dada's love, remembrance, and namaste. Personal meeting, now with matchstick of determined thought, burn away weaknesses of Ravan. Bab Dada, the immortal image, who give the blessings of Mukti and Jivan Mukti to all souls, says, do you consider yourselves to be angels who sit in the gathering of angels? An angel means one who has all relationships, all connections with the one. An angel is one who has all relations with the one and who is constantly stable in a steady stage. Every thought, every second, and every word spoken is in the love of one and service is also for the one. While walking, moving, seeing, speaking, and performing actions, such souls would be beyond any corporeal feelings. They would be abhyakt, that is, the foot of their intellect would be beyond the awareness of the ground that is, the body, they would remain up above. Even while being incorporeal, Baba takes a physical support and incarnates into the corporeal for the sake of godly service. In order to take children back home with himself and to give true Pagats the fruit of their long time of doing Bhakti, in the same way, to be an angel means to be loving and detached. Do you consider yourself to be a soul who has incarnated in the same way as the Father? That is, that you have received this physical Brahman life for the sake of doing godly service? Religious founders come to play their part of establishing their religion. In the same way, your duty is to be an incarnation of Shakti, power. At this moment, you are an incarnation, a religious founder. Apart from the task of establishing a religion, you Brahmin souls, that is, you souls who have incarnated do not have any other task. Those who constantly have this awareness and are constantly engaged in this task are called angels. Angels are double light. One kind of light is to constantly be the form of light. The second kind of light is to be detached from the burden of any type of karmic accounts of the past, that is, to remain light. Do you consider yourselves to be the form of light in this way? You do not use this Brahmin birth for anything other than godly service. You do not use it without Srimad or on the dictates of others or of your own mind, do you? This Brahmin birth is an invaluable treasure which you have received from the Father for the sake of godly service. 
you do not mix anything in this invaluable treasure which has been entrusted to you, do you? You cannot use even one breath of this Brahman life, even in your thoughts, for any other task. This is why, on the path of bhakti, there is the memorial of remembering God at every breath. Are you angels constantly, or angels for a temporary period? On the path of bhakti also, they have the discipline that something that has been donated cannot be used for any other purpose. So what was the first promise that all of you made to Bab Dada for your Brahmin birth? Do you remember that or have you forgotten it? The first promise you made to the Father was that you would surrender your body, mind and wealth to the Father. Since you have surrendered everything, it means you have surrendered your thoughts, breath, words, relations, all people, material possessions, sanskars, nature, attitude, vision, and awareness. This is called surrender. You use an even more powerful word than surrender. That is, you call yourselves the complete renunciates. Are all of you complete renunciates or just renunciates? To be a complete renunciate means that whatever you have renounced, whether it is relations, connections, intentions, nature, or sanskars, you have renounced them together with their progeny and all trace of the karmic accounts of the last 63 births. This is why it is called complete renunciation. To be such a complete renunciate who has also renounced the progeny of everything means that you can never even have the thought that your nature and sanskars of the past are like that now. Do the karmic accounts of the past pull you even now? Does the burden of any karmic bondage, the burden of any relationship of karma, the burden of the support of any person or any material possession pull you towards itself? These are not the thoughts on words of one who is a complete renunciate. One who is a complete renunciate would be free from all bondages and all burdens and would be a multi-million times fortunate soul who creates his fortune in every thought. Such soul earn an income of multi-millions at every step. You are such complete renunciates, are you not? You are stable in the meaning of the words, are you not? You are not those who just speak these words, but those who are the meaning of the words and inspire others to become this also, are you not? You do not find it difficult, do you? There shouldn't even be any question of you finding anything difficult because this is the religion and action of Brahman life. Whatever is one's life or whatever is one's original religion, one does not find practicing that to be difficult. You only find it difficult when you do not consider yourself to be an incarnated soul, that is, a soul who is the incarnation of Shakti. Always remember that you are an incarnation. You are a religious founder who establishes a religion. Religion means that your every thought is automatically for the sake of your religion. Do you understand? Such a soul is called an angel. 
Now, you should never speak words such as, what can I do? How can I do it? It doesn't happen like it should. I don't know how to do it. It happens even though I don't want it to happen. Who speaks these words? Would an angel or someone who is a complete renunciate speak such words? If you are a master almighty authority, how can these be your words? Compare the two aspects. Can a master almighty authority speak such words? Can the soul who liberates others from their bondages speak such words? Are these the words of a soul who is free from bondage? You are all souls who are free from bondage. Are you not? From today, finish such words in thoughts for all time. With the matchstick of determined thought, burn the weaknesses of Ravan. That is, celebrate the true Dashera, become victorious over the ten aspects, any trace of the five vices, and any type of attraction of the five elements. That is, celebrate the day of true victory. Acha, from today, none of you should go to Didi or Dadi with these type of problem. You may have a spiritual meeting with them, but not in order to talk about these things. You may go to them to take something from them, but do not go with such complaints. Acha, blessing, with the awareness of the lesson of one father and none other. May you be an elevated soul who creates a constant stage. If you constantly remember the lesson of one father and none other, your stage will become constant. Because you have received all knowledge, you have many points. However, while having all the points of knowledge, the wonder is in being able to stabilize yourself in the point form at a time when someone is trying to pull you down. Sometimes situations will pull you down, sometimes people will pull you down, and sometimes the atmosphere will pull you down. This will happen anyway, but you should be able to finish all expansion in one second and remain completely stable. Only then will you be blessed with the blessing of being an elevated soul. Slogan, those who solve all problems and remain content and make others content are jewels of contentment. Om Shanti.